let me start off with what I did um, yesterday. You know, this fun little disclaimer that's basically like, reminder, I'm not, you know, a medical doctor. Um, this is more of just a high level look at your genetic constitution. In iridology, we look at the tissue fibers and you know, the state that they are in, an acute state, in a chronically, you know, holding on to toxin state, are they weak, are they strong, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. What this is not, you know, fortune telling, can't tell when you're going to die, don't know if you're lying, all of that kind of stuff, this is definitely not. Uh, some of the more mm -hmm. mental, emotional, personality things that we might talk about are just because you know, iridologists in the past and even just some behavioral um, science specialists have correlated things with iris markings, but it still doesn't mean that we can tell your deepest, darkest secrets, even if we illuminate some mental, emotional things. So anyway, that mm -hmm. is that. And what is iridology? Oh, just really? A, yeah. Um, is this going to be available? Yeah. Oh, I'm recording here. this. Will this be available to um, to watch at a later time, or should I taking notes? Okay, great. Yes, <clears throat> I will record this for you, and um, I will end up uploading it on my website. And you know, I'll I'll do some light editing to it. But before I even edit it, I'll just send you this raw version. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, just a real quick reminder of what iridology is. I think this is an easy way to explain it to other people, is you know, the same way the eyes take the world in and process it. Um, your eyes show your inner world out like a dashboard for your body and your mind. It is um, complex nerve fiber, and your irises are your, you know, your eyeballs actually grew straight out of your brain as you were developing in the womb. So it is really complex brain tissue hanging out on the outside. So that's an easy way to explain iridology. And here we are with your irises. So you'll notice that when you look at the screen, your right iris is on the left and your left iris is on the right. That is because when you look at this next photo, that's how the charts are laid out. They're laid out for the practitioner looking at the person. So that's why I lay out your irises that way too, just an FYI. Okay, so do you have any questions so far? Nope. Okay, awesome. All right, I'm gonna start a little bit high level and then we will funnel down. So what's cool is I practiced using some of these controls a little bit. So I'm gonna use this little spotlight tool. Okay, we're gonna do this for a little while. Let's talk, for, oh, and I, by the way, I have your analysis here. That's what I'm looking at down here. So first your iris color, there's blue or there's brown. A mixed iris is when there's a combination of the two. Uh, the the blue-eyed constitutions have more sensitive immune systems, lymphatic systems. The brown-eyed constitutions more sensitive uh, digestive systems, you know, circulatory systems, um, their blood, things like that. A mixed iris is kind of going to have sensitivities in all of those areas. I think you might be a mixed iris, but this is definitely something that is really difficult for me to tell just via the photo. So. For our purposes, we're gonna kind of skip over that. It's not really super consequential and there's way more information, but I just wanted you to know that for us to truly determine if it was only a blue eye we were seeing or a mixed eye, I would probably need a clearer photo or to see it in person. So just wanted to tell you that. Okay. It appears to me that your right iris is dominant. Okay, so what does this mean? When we look at your two irises, we ask ourselves which iris seems to be most dominantly presenting markings. And I guess you can give me your opinion on that. Which, which iris do you think is, um, you know, showing more markings, more things that would catch your attention? Well, um, the, the left one has that like black splotch. So I thought maybe that one and, and the right one doesn't down, but you know, see down low on the right side. Yep. Um, of, the, of the screen has that um but 
I don't know if the right one is more intense. <clears throat> I'm not sure. Yeah, I thought the same thing. So that, that splotch you're referring to, we call them one, one of the different names, it's called in iridology is a pigment. So, you know, I thought the same thing, right? That pigment really draws your eye in there. And, you know, but when I zoomed back out, I did think the right one was just pronouncing itself a little bit more intensely as well. So that's why I chose that. Again, it's a, it's a pretty subjective thing and, you know, getting into talking to you more about kind of how you, your brain works, we'd be able to really um, isolate that. But so if we were to say, okay, this right iris looks a little bit more dominant, the right iris is going to correlate, correlate with the right side of the body. Um, so the liver is on this right eye, for example. Um, however, it correlates with the left side of the brain. So that would be some more linear thinking, maybe um, a little bit more of mental, like uh, attempts to mentally process the world, mentally order things. That's what that could mean. Um, which would be interesting because I do, I wrote down here that your irises look like they're more of a feeling type to me than an overly thinking type. So it would be interesting that there's that balance. So I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Uh, probably overly thinking is probably accurate. I, um, I work in television actually um, okay. as a producer. So okay. I deal with deadlines. Um, all day and it's stressful and I have to be very aware of kind of making sure everything's organized but then I'm a creative producer so I write and I put videos together and that kind of thing so I'm creative but I also um, regularly work within a very structured framework that you have to in order to get everything done okay all right so um I think we're illuminating why the left one seems like it should be more dominant with that pigment, but the right one, like literally in your current life is more dominant, right? Because you are, um, well, maybe not more dominant, but like you said, your current environment, which we work hours and hours and hours at our jobs, right? Your current environment is... Mm -hmm giving you an opportunity or forcing you into, or however you want to put it into balancing and using more of that left side of the brain, which we'll get into later, but the, the your dominant constitution that I see, that is one of the um, important things they learn is how to create mental structure because they are such creative people. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did a long time ago, I did a personality test and or it was a um i guess it was a personality test that we did for work and it showed that i was a different person at work than i am in my normal life um i was very uh, super organized at work very much like get it done and then my normal like outside of work life my the, so my adaptive self is kind of the super hyper organized you know line item do it do it do it kind of person and then my normal outside of work person personality is talking to people and very, they called like influential, like, um, you know, enjoying myself, still getting all my work done, but much more um, relaxed and happy and enjoying people's company and that kind of thing. So, which I thought was interesting because they're very, they're completely opposed. And yet I definitely relate to both. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's very interesting because um, this, this dominant constitution you're showing, which this is a great segue into it, is what I call an executor. And uh, an executor, part of their personality is that they are socially at ease. You know, they do love to be a little bit more type B in their social life, a little more go with the flow. They get along with others more easily. They're in relationship more easy, easy or they, you know, they tend toward relationship more easily. And so that's interesting that you would have this executor personality that maybe um, according to that other personality test, that's your outside of work thing that you, you know, you express. And then your um, hemispheric balancing, right? Like your work life 
creating the opportunity for you to balance that other side of yourself allows you to express that person in here. So it's cool that that's, um, that is what we were meant to glean by seeing that your right eye looks a little more dominant. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's interesting that that lines up. Yeah, that's cool. So I, um, ba based on the executor constitution, I actually wrote down that I thought you were probably more, more extroverted, uh, meaning that mm -hmm. you, you do, you know, relax and maybe get a little energy from being around people. I don't know if that's true. Definitely. Although I do like to recharge by myself. Um, I'm definitely an extrovert, I would say. So how do you recharge? Well, um, I like going out to parties, you know, I like going out, you know, meeting friends and that kind of thing. But I also need time by myself. I need to be, you know, I need to have like w at least one day a weekend. Usually I need time to just do what I need to do, like do what I want to do and not have to answer for anyone or answer to anyone, which I think mm -hmm. may also be partly because my work life is usually so full of deadlines that I just hate the idea of having deadlines when I'm not working. Yeah. Like I don't want to have to meet, you know, I don't want every day to be like, meet me at three and then we're going to go somewhere at five. Mm. So, um, I, I, but basically though, I, I do well when I have some time just to myself, but I'm also, I'm always glad when I go out to a party or something. So I'm always happy that I met people. And I, um, when I first started out, I used to report. So I have always loved like, you know, meeting new people and talk. And I've been kind of forced to have to talk to people, you know, even if I feel like there's nothing to talk about, I've always had been able to come up with something. So um, definitely extroverted, but I appreciate time by myself, but that might be a function of my work schedule. Yeah. You, it, it's interesting that you say a, a couple of those things because I think the word spontaneous is tied to an executor um, in my in my teacher's book. So th these system these constitutions are all based off of the Feridian constitutions by Frida Sharon, who's my iridology teacher. She she's well aware of all of them and um, loves the direction they've gone in more of the mental emotional space. But anyway, in her writings about an executor, which she calls a glandular digestive emotional, I'm just saying that on the recording in case you ever want to like Google it and look it up in her book. Um, but she yeah, uses it the down. word spontaneous. Um, uh -huh. That an executor, part of who they are is, you know, they're, they're spontaneous expressors. So I'm actually engaged to an executor and um, Having too many plans is suffocating to his spontaneous emotional nature. And mm -hmm. uh, so it kind of makes sense. I definitely that, relate to that. Right. You know, maybe it is a function of your schedule, but it also makes sense mm -hmm. that your personality type um, likes that expressive freedom. Yep. And it's also interesting that you are a reporter because one of the things an executor really excels at is verbal. Uh, clear, direct verbal expression, you know, after they've been able to digest thoroughly, whatever, you know, whatever they go to finally present is very mm -hmm. thoroughly done. And it's like their, their voice can stream out very straight and clear anyway. I don't know if that makes any sense. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah so that's it's interesting. So let me tell you why I can see that you're an executor. Can you see this little red spotlight, by the way? Oops. Yes. Okay, perfect. I can see your, I can see your mouse as well if, it's, if there's too much of a lag. Okay, cool. For um, your cursor yeah, I might as well turn it off anyway. Okay, yeah, I'll just do the mouse then. So this yeah. is kind of a circle a little bit here. Um, let me move my little chat box. You have some more on the left side here. This is a circle. This is a circle. This is a circle. This might be one, this yeah. might be a spike. Are you seeing these? Yeah. Okay, I was so hoping that I had really fibers really tight close together, but it looks like I've got some holes in there. <laughs> yeah, you know, they're not huge holes, right? So we always compare them to the types of fabric. There is mm -hmm. on the brown-eyed spectrum, they're velvet. On the 
you know, very tight fibered blue eyed spectrum, that's a piece of silk. On the opposite spectrum, that's a piece of muslin fabric, you know, like a potato sack. Um, you're, you're in the middle of that. So it's not overly loose fibers. Um, but I think if I could see clearer pictures, I would see even more that you do have a little bit of an open structure. Not, not a, not an, okay, open structure is not the right word because, um, that actually is a word to describe another constitution that truly has an open structure, but um, you're you're not overly tight. Let's put it that way. Right. Hey, just so you know, my mom has blue eyes and my dad has hazel eyes. I don't know if okay. that helps you in terms of figuring out whether I might be blue underneath or brown, but my mom has blue and my dad has hazel. Yeah, you might have inherited. Um, some of the brown eye from your from your father. That's probably what this um, heterochromia is. Okay, so a heterochromia is this this brown that we see around your pupil. Mm -hmm. That um, that could be. That's that's why I'm saying you're potentially a mixed iris because that could be some of that could uh -huh. be the velvet brown inherited from you know, your, where, wherever came through your father's line there. Um, it's also an area of opportunity for digestive cleansing. But if you did a lot of digestive detoxing, you might still have some of that brown there because it is actually just part of your constitution. So that's a little hard to heard, tell. I had heard, or I've, I've read some, some about this, but I don't know a lot about it. But I had heard that someone said that that it could be possible that the brown around the pupil might be sulfur deposits from taking antibiotics, of which I've taken a lot in my life. I don't know um, if that's maybe part of it. Because when I, when I shine the light from the side when I was trying to take the pictures, the brown part is raised. It almost looks like, um, you know those magnetic little shards that you could like use a pen on a toy and kind of move everything around? They're like, all these like little metal or magnetic or iron or something, they almost look like that in terms of their roots on my pupil. And I was hoping if they were sulfur that maybe I could detox them out. Yeah. I don't know so, if that's even a thing. Um, I don't know. Yeah. This is a great segue into that too because your main area of opportunity is uh, detoxing the the digestion in the colon. Um, so sulfur probably absolutely. When, when we see a heterochromia or we see um, you know, a, a more of a brown color here, it tells us, yes, there's definitely some accumulation. With, without seeing your irises okay. in, in person, it was hard for me to tell whether or not you had that congestion, but I actually thought that this, this part around here probably was a little raised. So you, you know, also uh -huh. telling me that and confirming says, yes, that is congestion. So essentially, okay. I think it's probably more than sulfur. It's, um, it would be more productive at this stage to just think about what, the, what it as a whole is probably holding on to if we can imagine sort of what's going on. So, you know, you, you already gave us a really great hint that you've had a lot of antibiotic usage, right? So what we are seeing in here because of these you know these spikes that are coming out and the the darker looking pockets within the this brown digestive area um we're definitely seeing a lot of areas of opportunity to clean out the colon because there probably is some stuff fermenting in there there might be some parasites in there um there might be some just some stuck waste just in all the different pockets that the you know can get stuck in the colon because of all the antibiotic usage this is basically confirmed um actually taking really really strong antibiotics and having it completely change my health and my gut health is what even got me into natural medicine to begin with so um oh yeah i'm really familiar with yes with this process of which i think david wolf coined this term but um he's a natural medicine, raw food guy. But anyway, it's essentially like turning the compost button on in your body, right? Like the, 
antibiotic, the killing off of our flora in there ultimately will create an environment where because the negative, it's hard for me to call it negative, but because the negative bacteria is proliferating in there, what that bacteria commonly does is when there is a ceasing of life, that bacteria then goes to decompose the biological matter into smaller things, right? So it can be absorbed into the earth, uh, maybe some of it's blown away, I don't know, whatever else there, right? It's essentially in the composting function. When we take antibiotics, um, strong strains of it, a lot of it, we've essentially kind of done that same function to our gut in there. Um, so when it's in that environment, it's in an acidic environment, it doesn't have its mucosal layer. So it, there's got to be a fine layer of mucus within the colon that helps to keep the colon walls soft. It helps to trap any bacteria in there that the colon doesn't want, so on and so forth that mucosal layer can't really live in an environment that also has the bad bacteria proliferating, okay? So if we start to imagine what over time has happened to that environment, it has started to probably get a little lazy because any muscle that can't work itself out a lot, like this colon that moves like this, is eventually gonna tire out. Um, if it tires out a little bit, it'll probably hold on to a little bit more toxins. If some more toxins are being held on to, then it's probably not absorbing water very well. If it's holding on to things for too long, it's probably allowing um, for breakages in the colon tissue, which um, you know Western medicine calls something like that leaky gut. Um, my guess is some of these spikes that's what that's telling us a little bit, that maybe those are some areas of weakness in the colon walls. Um, so the things start to get into this. That's, it's state, interesting like, you say that because, oh, I would say it's interesting you say that, but uh, I think I do have celiac disease. I've never been like formally diagnosed, but I figured out like 12 years ago that I was allergic to gluten and also allergic to casein, which is the protein in milk. And I used to get sinus infections all the time. I used to like live on antibiotics, which is so bad for you. And I finally started reading a lot about health and I um, figured out that I was allergic to the casein. And that's um, once I stopped drinking milk, um, cow milk or cow's milk, uh, that's when my sinus infection was. And I was still getting sick. And when I realized that I was allergic to gluten and I was so tired all the time and like he got, um, once I eating gluten, um, I felt so much better. I had so much more energy and it's a lot easier now than it was like 12 years ago. <laughs> Told you know what I was talking about and I can make my own bread and everything, but, um, I've really improved digestively. I've improved a lot since then. It used to be in a much, uh, just with, with my digestion. Yeah, I actually wrote that down in here that it looks like your digestion has improved. You can kind of see that because things have lightened up a lot here. Um, I, I'm not surprised that you feel things straight in your sinuses when your um, system doesn't like whatever you're eating because of these spikes that you have radiating upward and out into your nose area. So that makes, liter that makes complete sense that you would feel it um, right in there. So, so, okay. You know, improving your digestion has helped taking out the inflammation causing, you know, the gluten was causing you inflammation. So was the, you know, the dairy, you know, the casein, the, the dairy and stuff. So now an executor constitution, what this really means about their body. So, you know, my teacher calls it the glandular digestive emotional. Because essentially, because of that, so you're very about that combination of the antibiotics I used to take. Oh, sorry, are you talking right now, Megan? I think um, I think my internet is going a little slow. Interesting. You know what? I'm gonna unplug this microphone real quick. Um, I can't figure out. I'm not. Uh huh. Very well. Let's see. Yeah. 
Megan, can you hear me? And also allergic to. All right, let's try this again. Megan, can you hear me? I think we might have just lost our connection. Um, no, I see you talking. Or are you talking? Hmm. So allergic to casein, which is the protein in milk. And I no. Okay, you know what? This is like your audio dropped out. Oh, I dropped out. Oh, my audio dropped out. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, it's like replaying something. Re you out out and I um, figured out. Okay. Okay, let's see here. Are you coming to help me, Matt? Yeah. What happened? That's Megan's side. Oh. Yeah. So she's got a bad connection. Oh, okay. Do you do you think you have a slow connection, Megan? Um yes. Should I should you say that again? Oh, sometimes I do. I, it's possible. Um, I get various speeds sometimes, sometimes, and sometimes horrible. <laughs> but I'm not streaming anything else um, right now. So, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Um, maybe we should just try having you call back in because it was really good at the beginning. I'm using Wi Fi. I can move because. Because I'm sitting on an area of my couch that sometimes I have problems. Um, if I'm if to an area um, in the other room that's closer to the router, would that be good? Yeah, let's see. Let's just try it. See what happens. I'm up for whatever. Okay. Hopefully, it should get better. Sorry about that. No, don't worry about it. I'm gonna need a cashew while we're going. Let me go into the other room. Uh, okay. Let's see. Oh, hold on one second. I got the stuff plugged in. Oh, and my fiance said that if our connection doesn't get any better, you can just call my phone and I can put it on speakerphone. Oh, that's true. Okay. Well, let me let me move into the other room and see if this gets better. Okay. Okay. Let me, let me. Is it better now, or can you hear me still? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Do you want to keep going like this, and yeah. if it gets bad again, okay. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Cool. So Thank you. Where were we? At? Okay, we were talking about. Okay. So now, the main one one thing I really want to bring up is. There's really two ways we end up digesting, either enzymatically or via fermentation, okay? So enzymatically is technically the way that our body is supposed to work. So for example, the second we see food, the second I see this bowl of cashews, right? My brain starts to go, oh, we're gonna eat food and it starts to secrete some saliva. Because inside saliva, one of the things in there is the um, enzymes that starts to break down carbohydrates, okay? So by me chewing and chewing, and especially if I chew thoroughly, I am coating all of the carbohydrates in my mouth with saliva and with the enzymes that'll break those down. You know, carbs being fruits, vegetables, grains, blah, blah, blah. Um, as soon as it starts to get down the pipe, right, it goes into the stomach, the acid in the stomach will break down the proteins, the actual mechanics of the stomach, like masticate and chew and break down food even smaller, right? Um, in the stomach, the acidic environment will actually turn off the enzymes that are digesting carbohydrates okay because those only work in an alkaline environment so it turns off some of those enzymes but then it works on like protein and it actually works on physically breaking food down then after that it enters this area called the duodenum 
and the duodenum's this little spot where it's like all of the digestive organs you know pump in i'm probably i should probably just sit back down and make sure like a normal person i took off my <laughs> microphone so I have, like i have to sit a few inches from my computer okay uh -huh. So um, you have the duodenum and you, this is where the bile from the liver and gallbladder gets secreted in. This is where the pancreas secretes in its enzymes, um, so on and so forth. Enzyme activity happens again in there. And then after that, it starts to get absorbed in the small intestine, goes down to large intestine, so on and so forth. So that is how ideally we would digest because those enzymes are breaking everything down properly so that they're small enough for your small intestines to absorb the nutrients and for the rest of your organs of elimination to remove, you know, the waste from all your cells and your food and so on and so forth. Okay. That is how mm -hmm. ideally we would digest. Now in a system that yes, has had a ton of antibiotics, um, but also in an executor system, the enzymatic function is already like a little bit lower and by us you know disturbing the acid alkaline balance so much and the bacteria balance so much with the antibiotics that kind of a body is now digesting via fermentation which basically is because more food is coming in it will end up pushing the rest of it out and digesting via fermentation um, is like the equivalent of just you know watching something ferment if you left it outside or something rotten or even when we purposely ferment food right like it still breaks it down it still um it creates you know it off gases it breaks it down into smaller chunks too right but what it's breaking it down into is toxic and um you know, like I said, has its off gassing, has its negative repercussions, has its um, its life formations that are more anti-biology. Okay, so anyway, what I'm getting at with this is if we could maybe start to imagine that that is more what is happening within your digestion, then we understand how to detox it and reverse it. Okay, so okay, um, that's cool. Yeah, right. So that's kind of why I wanted to make that lengthy description. So, you know, you're probably already well on your way to improving your digestion because, you know, we've already discussed these few things that you've noticed and, you know, ways that you've improved your digestion. But um, that, that'll be the main takeaway from this phone call is that because of your history of antibiotics that you know, and I'm not sure what your, what your diet is. I wrote here, you know, do you have a low fiber diet, a high fiber diet? You know, I'm not really sure what your diet is either, but um, that is definitely your area of opportunity for your health, your health moving forward, where to focus your detoxing for a while. I think you could focus your, you know, detoxing for it to be really effective should be holistic on a lot of levels. Uh, but mm -hmm. for, for you, this digestive center of getting the acid alkaline balance back in the stomach by cleaning out um, all toxic matter in the colon with a lot of colon hydrotherapy, uh, castor oil packs, you know, things like that. As soon as you begin to relieve some of the toxic settlements that have probably occurred in your system because of the antibiotic usage, you kind of, it's like step one is like remove some of those toxins. And at the same time, you're like putting in good nutrition. But as soon as um, some of the toxic load is out, then the body can like rebuild a lot more. And then all of these, you know, great things that you'd be doing with your diet and your nutrition are really going to absorb now and, and really going to um, be taken into the system. So that's, that's where to think conceptually. Were you able to check out that ebook? Uh, no, I didn't yet. I'm so sorry. I've no. been working from home. Don't even worry about it. Let's look at this real quick because um, I'm just going to point out. Actually, you know what? No, I'm definitely going off on a tangent. I can't believe I've realized that. I'm so proud of myself. Um, <laughs> let's go back into your irises here. Yeah, so you were talking about the holes in my irises and how 
I was in the middle between silk and uh, macrame or something. I forget what the other end was. Yeah, the um, the burlap. Oh, burlap. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then we started talking about the executor constitution, which. So let me let me tell you a little bit more about the executor constitution. As I told you, uh, physically in the body, this is a slower, more thorough moving digestion, which means on that physical level, anything you can do to promote digestion is gonna be really great for you. So not eating too late at night, um, exercising after you eat. So you know maybe you eat dinner at 5 p.m. or so, go on a walk after that. Um, overeating, too um, rich of food combinations, all those types of things are going to be really hard for a system like yours because it's already, you, you already would thrive more with a simple diet. Um, mm -hmm. High fiber diet, mono meals if you're not feeling great, which means eating one food at a time, like a few apples, then they digest and then you eat a bunch of rice and then that digests. Um, if you can start, I do that sometimes just on my own. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you just kind of feel just like because sometimes I just, yeah, I mean, sometimes I don't want to fix a lot of stuff, but other times I'll eat something and I'm like, I don't really need to make anything else. I'm good with this. Um, you know, just, I just feel that way. So that must be, I mean, my body just knows what it, what it wants. Yes. And that's very common. Um, as I've, you know, talked to so many people, they crave the right things and they crave the wrong things. I think we mm -hmm. have like two processes in our system. I don't, I, it's hard for me to put my finger on, but it's like, there's a voice that takes us towards like nature building. And then there's like a voice that takes us towards like inertia. And uh, anyway, I find that, yeah, people are doing a lot of the things that serve their constitution. So if you can kind of remember, this is the mantra for an executor is what I cannot digest will cause distress. Mm -hmm. This is going to be in your emotional life. This is going to be in your work life. This is going to be in your diet. So essentially the thinking around that is because your digestion is, I like to use the word thorough because emotionally you guys end up being very thorough digesters of life, of situations. Mm -hmm. This is why you, um, make great TV producers and things because you're good at taking information and getting to the essential point. I think that's part of what those holes in um, your fabric are for. It's like, you can just like churn information, churn information. Now you guys are at your best when you have fluidity of expression in and out. So it should be mm -hmm. like, you digest life, you get rid of what's not serving you, you express yourself. Um, so having an expressive, you know, lifestyle, this creative career makes complete sense um, that, that you would have that. So, you know, what I would ask you here is, um, so this is what I wrote down about your mental sphere, is are you blocked by stuck fermenting toxic thoughts? Um, I'm not sure what... Uh... You mean, do I focus on the negative or, because I try not to do that. Okay, so let me, let but, me, I guess I'll tell you why I asked this question. Let me, let me back up there. Because the, so the mental zone is the zone right outside the pupil, and that is your zone that is um, a little darker. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I don't, I don't know what that would be translating in your mental life. Uh, but if you are ever, you know, maybe, maybe if you have to try really hard to stay positive. Um, you know, right now I'm living in an apartment. Um, and I didn't, I don't know if you can see this. I'm living in an apartment that I've discovered. And um, I just figured it out like last October. And so I'm really not happy in this apartment. And so I'm, working really hard, doing everything I can, because trying to move in New York is so expensive. Um, and especially, I don't know what it's going to be like in a couple months from now, because I'm supposed to move in May or June. But um, I've been living in an apartment that I am aware, very aware is toxic. And that has weighed on me a lot. I don't know if that might, because normally I'm a very positive person. 
but that's why it really weighed on me a lot because I'm pretty much powerless to change that right now, which is not something I'm used to. I'm used, I'm used to, if I want to change something, I do it. I make things happen. And in this case, I'm in a situation where I know I'm in an environment that's not healthy and pretty and I can't move yet because I have a lease and because it's so expensive. So I'm really just been kind of going at like a hundred miles an hour trying to work as much as I can. I'm a freelancer. So trying to work as much as I can to try to save money so I can move. Um, so I guess in terms of like, there, that's like something that's kind of maybe overwhelming in my life right now, where it's not usually like me to have something so negative hold, hanging over my head, because usually I could change it. But in this instance, I don't have a lot of options until my lease runs out and until I have a little bit more money. So I'm, I'm saving, I'm working, but I'm still responsible for the lease until June. So um, it's soon, but ever since I found out in, in October that I'm living in this apartment that has mold and asbestos apparently and lead, um, it's been pre- really depressing just knowing that I can't just go somewhere else, you know? So maybe, maybe that has something to do with it. Yeah. Well, you know, what's interesting is as you're saying that what my, what my holistic intuition is telling me um, is that I wonder what will change on the outside of your life when the inside changes more. Mm -hmm. I, I personally have had used to have really dark, um, a really dark bowel area in my irises. And I had my own interesting mental climate, which matched my environment, which like who started it, right? But then I saw this detoxing and especially focused on my, um, my colon because I had such an area of opportunity there and my liver, which that's going to be your other area of opportunity. That's what brown color tells us. So I focused mm-hmm. on those so heavily. Then my mental climate is different. And the people that I attract in my life are different, the conversations in my life. So it's interesting that I would be like, are you mentally stuck? And no, you're not really mentally stuck, but you are stuck in an environment which is making like this be stuck here. And I wonder, um, I wonder what might shift in your life if you can start the inside out healing, which you'll learn in the detox book. Is yeah, that's what I'm, I'm really anticipating that because I've kind of been saying to my friends and my mom and my, my family, you know, as soon as I move, everything's going to get so much better. I just know it. So, uh, you know, cause I feel like I've been, cause I, I, I have, um, I've been like, I talked to this naturopathic doctor and I have all this stuff that I should, I'm supposed to start taking to detox, but, um, from all of the different, you know, toxins in my body, but I don't know if I should even start it still in the environment. And I don't know if it would even, you know, I don't know if it'd be like wasting money to, but then I hate the idea that I have all these toxins. So I'm not sure. So I guess, I guess I'm kind of stuck in that respect too, because it's like, I want to get better, but I feel like as long as I'm in this apartment, is it, is it a point, is it pointless to start that process until I can physically remove myself from an environment that I know is probably going to add more toxins? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So I'm not positive what your naturopath gave you. I will say what I think would be productive right now is to um, try to get toxins out of the colon and try to start like, um, so, okay. So typically when we detox really well, we're adding in really good nutrition and water and then the body starts to like, have, promote or provide symptoms for us, which tell us which organ needs us to open it up so we can get the toxins out. Okay. So that's like typically the detox process. Mm-hmm. And um, the better we are at applying the right remedies at the right time, which is what my detox book will teach you. So this will probably go really great hand in hand with whatever the naturopath is teaching you. Um, but as we open all the channels really well, and as we have the elimination organs working well, the colon, the kidneys, the skin, the lungs, so on and so forth, as those are working um, really well, we have less and less symptoms of toxins coming out, so on and so forth. 
So we really like to start um, detoxing by adding good nutrients. And however, I kind of think your intuition is a little bit right that your mind and body aren't really in the right state to receive this like nourishment from your naturopath, right? Your body's maybe not in the right state to like really detox some of these chemicals that your naturopath found. Um, but what mm -hmm. I think your body is in the right shape for is castor oil packs, which um, soften the digestion and are really great for the liver. This is in my ebook. And oh, I've wanted to try those. Okay, yeah. Um, it'll be really great for the glandular digestive constitution, which is your executor constitution. Um, so castor oil packs will begin to start to change that climate, okay, without, you know, too much extra activity. It's like, no matter what you do, I, I can promise you a castor oil packs right now will be productive. And then if you can do some colon hydrotherapy, I don't know if you're open to colon cleansing, but when our body yeah, I've done okay. I've done it before. It it felt a little weird, but but I know it's um I I know it's an important uh, part of detoxing, so I'm open to it. Gosh, it it it, it can feel very weird. Like mm -hmm. eventually, I'm gonna make a parody video on all of the different like types of enemas I've tried, like with like oh. chamomile tea or like coffee enema, and I'm gonna make a parody video because. It is a weird, it's a weird world to be in, but gosh, they work so well. So um, to me, those are your main areas of opportunity because regardless, if you um, do provide some relief to, you know, this intersection, it'll be able to even deal with the toxins that you're sitting in better right now, if that makes sense. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. So that, that's at least something I can do while I'm in an environment like this apartment, um, to successfully detox myself. And if nothing else, open up all my detox pathways for when I start to do heavier detoxing later of the other chemicals. Cor correct. Yes. And this, this colon is one of the most important elimination channels to get moving better. So yes, I, I love that you have um, gone in this direction. It is really important when we go to detox and cleanse that first we let off the gas uh, before we, you know, slam on the brakes. And typically, you know, you'll have a person who definitely has all kinds of symptoms, right? Like they're constipated, they've got skin symptoms. So they're like, hey, I need to do a detox. And they go and they're like, I'm going to go do this five day juice cleanse. They jump right into that five day juice cleanse. Their cells start to release toxins. They dump them into those elimination channels. And boom, they can't get the toxins out because they were already, you know, showing that they were struggling to begin with. And then that- So they make themselves worse, right? Yes. And the word is auto-intoxication. Oh. Like when you're like refilling your toxins because now they're back in your circulation. Because before your body was doing what it had to do to keep the toxins out of circulation. So that's part of why people gain weight is um, toxins are fat soluble for the most part. And so your body creates these fat cells to put these toxins into to keep it out of your precious circulation. Like the body is very- yeah, I've actually gained a lot of weight um, since I've moved into this apartment, I've gained a lot of weight. Um, and I think that that, I'm, I'm, it sounds like that is what you're talking about too, but not only have I gained weight, but the normal things that I've done that I usually do to try to lose the weight, it's like I, it doesn't work, you know, and it's, which has been really uh, frustrating too. Um, but I understand apparently that's something that has to do with mycotoxins as well from the mold. Um, but yeah, you're right about the fat, basically that my fat is storing toxins to try to protect my body and it won't let go of them because it's like, oh no, you can't handle all this, like all these toxins in your body at once. But then I'm walking around like 30 pounds heavier than normal, which is not good either. So, right. Gosh, I know that's I know that's definitely not ideal. But how how beautiful is your body for protecting you like that? You know, it's yeah like a toxic a toxic environment, and your body's like, no, not my girl, not my girl. Mm -hmm. I think that's really cool. Um, so okay. All right, so we are, we're on the right track here then. Um, by starting to detox, 
the digestion. So you'll read in the book, Hearing's Law of Cure says that healing has to start from top down and inside out. Um, the, your symptoms are going to appear in reverse order from when they came. Okay, so basically what this means, and you'll read about it more in the book, is that for us to detox properly, our brain has to believe it, you know, has to be on board, and um, our digestion has to heal first. I feel like your brain is on board. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you wouldn't even have initiated this conversation if it wasn't. It is on board enough. Uh, your, your brain believes enough that there's solutions, right? So that's, that's a gorgeous quantum energy to send out there. And so now if you focus on healing the middle out, okay? Um, so what that means basically is the skin is always the last organ to heal. The skin is the last elimination channel. Um, when the skin is starting to show issues, we know that, hey, deep, deeper down in here, they're not able to do their processing. So as a last resort, they have to send toxins out the pores of the skin. So yeah, I've had a lot of skin issues. Okay. All right. Yep. So this, this all makes sense. Um, and by the way, I did too, when I first got into all this about, um, you know, 10 years ago or so, I also had darker bowels. I had constipation. I had skin issues. Um, I had, I don't know, like, I mean, just, just because I know what my mind is like now, I know my mind was a little darker back then. I, it's, uh, that's the only way I can really describe it. Um, I used to have night sweats, insomnia. So I used to have so many symptoms that most people are walking around with every day thinking it's normal for their lives, you know? And then I got into this deliberate detoxing and cleansing where I learned how to open up and improve all the elimination channels. So then it didn't really matter what cleanse I was doing or what diet I was on. I always could understand what my body was asking me for. So um, the name of the game for you, I believe, when we start to look at cleansing and detoxing, we would ask ourselves first, is the body able to eliminate more toxins right now? Or is, will it go into a crisis mode if we try to do that? It's one of the, the biggest questions we ask. And that one of the easiest ways to figure that out is, are we already having some symptoms that tell us these organs are having issues anyway? So for example, if we were having constipation or diarrhea or bloating or gas, maybe smelly gas, um, things like that. Hey, we know the elimination organ that is the colon is, you know, under functioning for whatever reason. So, you know, we would think, hey, if we go and just do a big cleanse or whatever, slam on the brakes, we're probably gonna have a healing crisis. You'll read about this in the book. We're probably gonna have you know, a symptom crisis having to do with the digestion because it can't really get out that much at that amount of time. So when we start to think of it that way, we approach cleansing more slowly. And so for you, if you were to, start to improve the colon with castor oil packs and colon hydrotherapy, kind of the combination of the two, um, doing your simple mono meal eating, mm -hmm. going on walks and getting, getting, you know, exercise, like trying to get some fire to the midsection with some exercise. Those things mm -hmm. are going to start preparing your body to be able to do more of this cleansing and pull out all of these toxins and heavy metals and stuff or whatever that your naturopath found. However, what, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say, how often um, do you think I should do castor oil packs? For about three months, aim for two to three times a week. Okay. Because just being a little bit of a healing process and then back off for a little bit, if you can do as much journaling as possible during this process, then you're gonna to start to become intimately familiar with what these treatments do for your body. You know, as an example, anytime I do a castor oil pack, the next day, I feel like the flattest stomach ever. Like I feel like 
whoa, this is what it feels like to have zero bloating, you know? That's an example of, you know, my awareness of how healing a castor oil pack can be. And okay. I know to do one now when I have like a lot of flatulence, okay? Flatulence, mm -hmm. it's so funny that I'm calling it flatulence. Like <laughs> when I've got farting or gas, right? Like uh -huh. I have, um, when I have like a smellier gas, I know, hey, I need to soften something up in here. I feel like there might be a little fermenting going on. So that's when I know to put a castor oil pack on. So for example, mm -hmm. that's what the Interesting. would be really good for. So yeah, that would be a couple times a week. Now, the difference between a colonic and an enema, right? An enema is the at-home one. Some people say a colonic, the professional ones, is the equivalent of 40 enemas. Um, so let's say, for example, if you wanted to try a colonic, I would say do three over the next six to eight weeks, and you've kind of got some stuff out. Um, I want to I wanna say something in advance. Col you know, colon hydrotherapy is going to wash everything out of the gut, right? So this is... Um, some haters of uh, natural medicine and colon hydrotherapy are going to say, hey, that's not good for you to wipe out all the bacteria. And what I'm going to say to them is, you know what, you are correct, but the colon is too toxic right now. The rest of the stuff that's in there is um, causing more harm than the little amount of good bacteria, right? So it's kind of a mm -hmm. reset. And um, as you get more into this, you, you'll learn that... Um, there's such a thing called an implant, which is essentially an enema, but you're not using a lot of water to wash anything out. You're using a small amount of liquid to just implant something right into the colon. And doing probiotic implants is very common. Oh, That's interesting. That's a lot of cleansing. Okay. And a lot of colon hydrotherapists uh, will actually do a probiotic implant for you if you bring your probiotics. Now, would I have the option, um, could I just as easily take, because I take probiotics, but could I just as easily take probiotics at home, or does it have to be like in, through cold, colon hydrotherapy to be effective? No, you could also take them this way. It's just by implanting anything in the colon wall, you're just getting it directly in the bloodstream. You're completely bypassing any digestion. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just a more potent dose of it. But I, I will say, your probiotics will keep getting more and more effective as that area gets more and more cleansed out. And if you're mindful of eating an al a more alkaline diet as you're cleansing mm -hmm. everything, um, then your probiotics will be even more effective. But I would say that um, probiotics are helpful for sure. And obviously, they're not all created equal. It depends on how complicated of a strand they are, how old they are, so on and so forth. However, I think that there's no probiotic strain that is strong enough to alter the inner ecology of a colon that is that toxic. So sometimes when I'm thinking, hey, you know, what is most effective and what is actually working, I would say, you know, I might not even take probiotics very much until I've done enough colon cleansing. And then I would take a lot. Then I would like take a really potent dose for like three months. Does okay. that all make sense kind of? Yeah, definitely. I had, I had a couple of questions um, mm -hmm. if I could ask. Can you tell me the, um, the on my left iris, the area that I had mentioned before that kind of looks like a splotch? Yeah. What does that mean? I know that sometimes it means like that there's been an injury or a problem. Um, what is that little black splotch on the on my left iris? What does that mean? Yeah. And by the way, hello, Eleanor. Thanks for joining us again today. Okay, so let's look at this little splotch. What you call a splotch, I'm pretty sure it's a pigment. Uh, from what I can see here. Oh, I did mm -hmm. not mean to draw on that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to clear that. Okay, so I wrote it down right here. Now, what a pigment is in, uh, from the health perspective is it's a, it's a toxic settlement of some sort. And in most um, 
It's mostly related to a toxic drug settlement of some sort, like maybe there was some steroid usage in the past. Um, it's, it's hard for me to tell you exactly what chemical is settled in there. You know, also mm -hmm. looking at your parents' irises, they might have that same pigment. For example, my mom and I both share the same pigment in the same spot on our irises. I don't know. Oh. Also, you know, my grandma does or whatever. Um, but in, it is in the emotional zone of your iris. In um, behavioral iridology, it is in the rivalry anger zone. So that would, what it's suggesting is that you might be pretty competitive, possibly mm -hmm. with maybe any females in your like lineage. Like, did you maybe have like a grandma who really crushed it or something? Um, I don't know, but that is what, that's the zone that that is in. And because it's in your left iris is why I'm saying grandma and females, because that is the, the female zone, the feminine zone. So I don't know if any- Oh, you know what? I have, I have a big family and I have a sister that um, a lot of stuff has happened with that I don't get along with. But could that be it? Yeah, I think that could be it. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay, so what that means, let's talk about that. Um, in behavioral iridology, they say, hey, the pupil is wholeness, and the iris is a journey we're going to walk on our mm -hmm. way to wholeness. And part of what this iris mapping is allowing for is saying, hey, on your journey, you're going to experience these challenges that as you balance, rise through them, grow through them, you're going to reach wholeness and the wholeness being freedom from the limitation of your iris type, right? Like you're an executor, uh, but wholeness is you are everything and you know you're everything, okay? If that makes sense. So meaning that this pigment and this potential you know, rivalry with your, your sister or whatever's happened with, you know, all these things that have happened with your sister seems that, you know, it was by design in your life so that you could become what is the question, you know, um, with this zone, let me actually, let me actually look up real quick. Um, what, they well, it's, um, we, we uh, disagreed over um, some things in our family and then over, um, my dad passed away, but um, over the care of my dad and some just some things that she had really done that I saw as very wrong. And I realized that she's hard, really hard to deal with and she's kind of toxic. She does a lot of um, really toxic things when it comes to communicating and kind of like the drama triangle. I don't know if you've heard of that before, but she's, uh, she does a lot of, um, the way that she, that she gets her needs met is very um, unhealthy. And so I just stopped talking to her because I couldn't, I, it was really, it was painful because basically she gets in fights with people a lot, like, you know, just over whatever. And I think that's part of how she expresses herself. So it was so draining to me, especially with everything with my dad when he was, he had Parkinson's that it was so draining that I was like, I don't have room for this kind of like toxicity in my life right now. And my life is a lot better not talking to her, but it does make me really sad that we don't have a better relationship. And I, I don't know, I've tried to try, you know, to try to fix things, but I keep getting the same kind of behaviors from her. And I feel like, okay, it's better that I just kind of separate myself. But like I said, it, it does hurt me and make me sad. And I don't know if it's crazy that that would be something that would show up in my eye. <laughs> yeah. And, um, okay. So let's add to this a little, what shows up in your right eye, um, over here. I think those are, oops. I think these are, um, the openings here. Okay. What shows up mm -hmm. here is the opportunity to let go of judgment. Um, which is interesting, right? Because you say that the way that you perceive and, you know, judge the way that your sister did everything, right? Um, okay, I'm also gonna say another thing. Have you ever heard mm -hmm. of generational healing? Yes. What have you heard of about it? Um, just that a lot of times we carry 
kind of traumas from past generations into our lives and that if we work on those things that we can actually kind of heal them so that we don't pass them on or that we're not still dealing with traumas and that kind of thing that may have happened with our mom or our dad and basically kind of set ourselves free from um, the problems that our families experienced. Yeah, absolutely. So this, this type of work I've been introduced to, so it's like iridology is the guide, but we do these self healings. This is what I studied in natural medicine school. And it was, you know, us applying these holistic, you know, remedies, these different remedies that we've been talking about. We changed our diet, we changed our herbs, we got counseling, we did all these things, right? And after three months, we were completely transformed, okay? I've watched multiple people do this. I've led multiple people on this journey. And what I started to see was this connection between the inside and the outside, right? I mean, it's all stuff that we've heard about. People say, be the change you want to see. I mean, we've heard every single cliche that has to do with this, okay? But I'm, I'm witnessing this happen as people detox and heal the top, detox and heal the inside everything starts to move out. I watch generational healing happen. Okay. So this is, this is part of what I think it is. I'm still getting into some more research with this, but family members, as we grow up in our nervous systems, like our nervous systems have a connection. So it's like, let's take you and your sister as an example. You guys potentially have a nervous system connection in your brains and your nerves that activates when you're around each other and you play out a pattern you activate right. certain emotions and nerves in each other right like it's just a thing that happens and you kind of even alluded to it you said you know no matter what I do it just things don't change and I keep getting the same reactions right so what mm -hmm. I've started to see is same with you know this apartment situation you know I, I keep I keep doing this holistic thing because this is what I'm seeing working but if you go in and you heal and you start to let go of just judging anything, you know, maybe the need to judge anything, just the energy of judging, the energy of sadness, grief around your sister's, mm -hmm. like not even anything to do with your sister, right? But if you start to heal and change those dynamics in yourself and you start to change them in your own nervous system, that connection that was once very active and alive with your sister, it will deactivate. And the way energy works is it will keep moving. And so things will have no choice but to shift and change with your sister. Like that's, um, this is the thing I've started to learn out of watching so many people go through this is once they start detoxing and changing their insides and just kind of mm -hmm. committing to that over and over like this crazy internal transformative process, their whole family changes. My whole family has changed like literally over and over so um you know interesting as you feel sad about your sister i want you to feel empowered in your transformation your internal cleansing and your internal healing that that is where you can focus your energy that will most likely have an effect on shifting the dynamics of that relationship interesting but i believe that really strongly okay. So then could I get, will that little pigment go away? Is it possible that it would go away or? So that's a very great question. This is a super controversial area in iridology. Uh, the majority of iridologists believe that irises don't change. Okay. So they believe that, you know, when you're a little kid, you can start to show toxins, but they don't believe it would possibly reverse. In mm -hmm. the, um, the, in the way that I've been taught, we aren't just iridologists, we're natural medicine detox cleansing students. So we all mm -hmm. go so deeply on the detoxing cleansing side of things that we all have seen changes in our irises. Okay. So am I going to say yes, it would change? No, I can't say that. However, we have seen pigments like that, not completely go away, but lighten up. A little bit in color maybe um, the density slightly start to change Interesting. Um, however you know as a disclaimer because of the this controversy in iridology I can't really say yes it's going to change because my dramatic iris change 
was preceded by a dramatic amount of cleansing. You know, it's like what I did was abnormal because I was a student and I was so gung ho. And so, you know, mm -hmm. that is why my iris has changed, but I just, that's not something that I believe would happen for the majority of people unless they went really, really, really deep with their health, if that makes sense. How did your irises change? So um, if you, when we get off this call, if you look at my Instagram page and you look at the first picture, you'll see that over mm -hmm. a six year period, they lightened up a lot. And that's because I have a mixed iris. My dad is from mm -hmm. Mexico. He has dark brown eyes. My mom is from Iowa, bright blue eyes. I literally have the combo of the two. And um, however, I was born three months premature and jaundiced with a really weak liver. And when I got into natural medicine, the year before I had taken really bad, anti you know, really strong antibiotics for something. And I was having constipation. I was having like skin rashes. Um, you know, I was only going to the bathroom like once a day, once every other day, you know, it was just like, things were slow in here. Plus I had a freaking temper, man. I, I mean, I still could get real mm -hmm. saucy and pissed off because I'm a fire energy, but I was experiencing the negative parts of fire energy, which is, you know, mm -hmm. fire can be helpful, right? It can burn down a field so that new growth can happen or it can blaze an entire country, right? Like, there are these two opposite aspects, right? So I had all these signs of having a liver that was weak and inflamed and angry. So when I did a bunch of cleansing, I focused so much on cleansing my colon and I focused on my liver. Like I did castor oil packs all the time. I did a ton of coffee enemas. I did some liver stone cleanses. I took a liver cleanse drink. Um, really often, which is something that I think will be really great for you to start um, in this beginning stages of moving these toxins out and getting the colon moving. The liver mm -hmm. cleanse drink is going to be great. That's also in my book. I just looked at your eyes, by the way. That's crazy. It's crazy. So also, the change. Know, let's also, I want to throw another disclaimer in there, right? Those are two different cameras. So even if it mm -hmm. wasn't that dramatic, like just say that those light irises were maybe a little too light and the dark ones are too dark, it still is a huge change. Yeah. And I'm telling you, those two people are different also. The anxiety of that first person, the like darker mental climate of that first person, the constipation, the temper. So it's like now I'm still super fiery, right? Like everybody knows I'm way feisty like when you meet me. But I feel like I'm able to use my fire energy for good now as a professional tire pumper is what I call it. Like I love to pump <laughs> people up. Like I'm a cheerleader because I'm so fiery. I can't help it that once I get focused on you and excited about you, like, mm -hmm. woo, right? But before when my liver was doing its thing, I was just really fiery all the time and just had this temper. So anyway, a, a, a solid focus on my colon and my liver were my main areas of opportunity as well as my nervous system though. Cause if you look in those photos, you see all those rings and those uh -huh. spikes. I have a very sensitive um, nervous system as well, which is- Are the spikes in my eyes, do those have to do with my nervous system also? Yep, so those are also um, showing that you have some, what, what is the right term? I get some weaknesses in your nervous system as well. Okay. So for you, um, my, the, my naturopath told me that, um, because of the mold in my apartment and the lead and the asbestos and apparently mercury also from a couple of fillings in my teeth, um, that, but especially from the mold that it has completely thrown off my nervous system. Um, and that basically that I'm always in, um, sympathetic mode, I think is the bad one, right? Is, is I'm always in fight or flight. And that's something that I need to, to work on as well. That might explain why that right pupil's a little larger. It's hard to tell with photos, but in, in person, um, there's- That's probably, it's, they're normally, it's normally not. I think that's just a function of the photo. Okay. Cause yeah. when I was, when I was trying to take pictures, they all, the pupils were always small if I had the camera in front of them. And then, although they look like they're in the same place in the picture, I don't know, but I've never noticed that. Um, when I've looked, you know, at my eyes in the past, I, I think it might just be a picture, the part of the picture. I'm not sure. Yeah. You know, these is things. Is that possible that they'd be smaller or one would be smaller and one would be bigger? 
Um, it could be possible, but I'm guessing that's not what's happening. That's usually with some, um, some like more acute stages of nervous disturbance, which you're not having, you know? Um, okay. You know, and it's like everything, every system is so connected that if you were having some, you know, some toxic bowels, that would be leaking out and annoying your nerves. You know what I mean? And then if your mm -hmm. bowels um, aren't able to really absorb nutrients really well, then the nerves aren't being fed, right? And if there's any congestion, mm -hmm. it's pressing on the nerves. Um, you know, so everything does go so hand in hand that when we start to look at detoxing and cleansing, it's important we treat ourselves very holistically for that reason. But then the iridology can guide us to, okay, which areas are holding more toxins right now? Um, so your, so yes, your nerves are super important, um, will always be important because of those spikes in your, you know, that we, that we see radiating out there. Um, however, the first area of opportunity for your detoxing would be to get toxins out of the colon. Okay. Um, is what I would say would be the main focus. Let me see what other, there's a couple other things I saw, like if you have any perfectionist tendencies towards maybe your work output. I definitely, see. I definitely, um, there's so many things I want to do. Um, but then before I even get started, I think, well, if I'm not going to do it right, I shouldn't do it at all. And so then I never get started on things, which is, so I've, I've heard some really good advice recently, which is just to take bold steps imperfectly, which is really inspiring because I think I really need to do that because I've definitely not done a lot of things that I wanted to do because I thought, well, if I can't do it perfectly or exactly the way that I want, so I get the optimal result, then it's really not worth doing or I shouldn't do it, you know, is kind of what I, so I definitely go through that. Yeah. What did you see in my eye that makes you think that? If I may what ask. did I see that? It's just this relationship um, here. The spikes? Um, yeah, it's it's seeing this relationship between, oh, actually, sorry. This is your kidney area right here. Mm -hmm. And it just, you have a spike going there too. Oh, okay. And the inherent mental part, here, let me go to the next chart. Um, in this part, inherent mental to kidney, see this? When we see this, we mm -hmm. know that somebody might have some perfectionist tendencies, um, which I do too. Okay. And I was the same way. Like if I couldn't do something to perfection, I wouldn't do it. My, my thing that I say is I, I put out B plus work now. And now that I put out <laughs> B plus work, it's a little cringy because if you read my ebook, there's a couple typos, right? And that's like kind of cringy for me because I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that I put something out with typos in it. But more I'm like, oh my gosh, I put something out because I'm the same exact way with all my ideas that lived and died in my own brain. Just, mm -hmm. just the, the graveyard of my ideas there. So yeah, that's awesome that you already stumbled upon um, something to ground you there because it looks like an area of opportunity for your growth, you know, in your mm -hmm. irises to get, get past, um, you know, I think perfect's a dirty word. That's what, you know, I always talk to people about is I think it's like one of the dirtiest words, like our ears can hear, you know, because it's like, wrong. Right. it's wrong in every way. The longer we think about it, the like more it tenses us up, you know, it's like such a dirty word. Um, and it also, I think it's a barrier to really connecting with people, you know, mm -hmm. um, for example, my other profession, I'm a charity benefit auctioneer. So I get on stage and I raise money for people. And anytime something has really messed up at an event, like once we blew a transformer and I lost complete power and I had to like scream from the stage, for example, uh, anytime mm -hmm. something like that has happened, we've had record breaking fundraising nights. And it's like, what I've just really finally learned is if people sense perfection anywhere, they're actually more, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Turned off by it. They're, yes. They're definitely more turned off by it, you know? And so mm -hmm. it's even like perfect work seems completely unattainable. And anyway, I don't know. I just think it's really interesting that for me to heal perfectionism, I had to like, 
just logically understand um, how much more work I could get done and how many more people I could connect with if people didn't think I was perfect. Right. Anyway, Interesting. Yeah, I've had a huge battle with that. And it's so funny because I will put out the most B plus B minus work now. And I can't believe how okay I am with that. Mm -hmm. Like this, even this, um, us doing these live analysis, I just totally jumped into this, doing a bunch of things wrong. You know what I mean? Like sound was screwed well, up. I'm right. so glad that you did. This is really interesting. Right, because it's still fun, right? Like we're still having so much fun. Yeah. Um, okay, what else did I write? Can down? I ask anything else? Is, well, oh yeah. I was going to ask you if there's anything else that you see um, in my irises that we haven't talked about yet. Like we talked about the brown around the pupil. Um, we talked about how you weren't, it, I might be a mixed iris. Um, the nervous system from the spikes, I guess you can kind of see that. Uh -huh. And then the perfectionism. Is there anything else that when you looked at them, you're like, oh, I bet this is what's happening? Yeah. Um, I said toxic colon congesting. Congestion, how is that affecting your mind? We already talked about that. Um, the liver. Mm -hmm due to the brown pigments. Um, you know, both kidneys have loose structure and what looks like inflammation. So this is the kidney here. We see some looser structure mm. there, the inflammation. Okay, this is a little hard for me to tell because of the quality of the photo, but it looks like right. it's a little brighter and more inflamed around here. So maybe you can look for yourself with your own um, okay. here. And so that's the kidney on that side. And then on this side right here, so you see mm -hmm. how they're both open? And this yeah. kidney on this side would say that if you're struggling with any feelings of inadequacy as a female or being intimate mm -hmm. and vulnerable as a female, this is why. Because this kidney is open there. So the more you soothe this kidney, um, the more you're going to experience um, the positive energies of a kidney. Or I shouldn't say positives. But in the kidney, we have fear and creativity unworthiness and, okay. and like creativity and like self-actualization kind of like actualization mm -hmm. of our creative receptive our receptive energies into creativity so the more you um work on your kidneys the more you if you're feeling any feelings of unworthiness the more that that will be improved there every every uh, iris i've ever seen every american iris i've ever seen at least has mm -hmm. colon and kidney areas of opportunity. Every single one. It's got to be our diet and our society and just the the soil at which we're that we're all living in. Right. Interesting. So that's a, that's an everything for people. The kidney treatment, which is incredible, is the uh, ginger poultice that goes over the kidneys. This is also in the ebook. Okay. And you know. When I'm talking about all these things, it seems like a lot, right? It's like, like a castor oil pack, a ginger poultice, um, the, the colon hydrotherapy. So ultimately, these things are designed to be used all at once for a few months or like any time we do a cleanse. And then after that, mm -hmm. after we've gained the wisdom as to how they really affect change in our body, then we just use them as needed. Like I just did a, a, kinder, a kidney ginger poultice last week because um i actually lost the majority of my other business with this virus and the the shutdown of large oh, yeah. events right and it really kind of stressed me out and i thought i'd give myself a better chance of not feeling so much fear if i soothed my kidneys so i mm -hmm. did the ginger poultice which i think it worked out because i've been really creative lately so um, oh that's good yeah i think that I, cool. I actually kind of think that that's how it shifted that dynamic for me so after we kind of have done these things all at once what we've done is we've relieved and improved the elimination organs so much that they can kind of take over and do their thing again. And then we just mm -hmm. add these things in as we need them. So if it sounds like a lot, it feels like that at first, but then it becomes second nature once we really understand how to use them. Cool. Okay, what else do we see here? Um, yeah, bowel fermentation. If you're experiencing any brain fog, that's coming from the bowels. Okay. Um, if there's any stinky farts or constipation, that would um, tell us, hey, it's the bowels again. But, mm -hmm. you know, we keep saying the word bowels because that's, that's the area of opportunity your iris is really showing here. Um, so then I also say you must release and express and experience spontaneous emotional expression. We talked about that with that um, 
execute your constitution. It's wonderful. You already have a creative job as well and that you're spontaneous in your social life. I think um, you should always feel good about being free on your days off, knowing that that's part of your health management routine because you need that spontaneity. And then um, absorption. Absorption's probably a little bit slow. Okay, let's see. What I wanted to talk about Okay, with an executor, I wanna to talk to you about how you're gonna know when you're feeling out of balance and you're gonna know that you really need to work on your digestion. So an executor, um, I call them that name because they're specialists. They really specialize in doing one thing at a time. Uh, they specialize in executing any idea. They specialize in being the one that does a great job actually implementing whatever it is. They'll take their time, they're thorough, so on and so forth. Their body also works like that. Their digestion works thoroughly. It takes its time. That's why they benefit from the more simple combinations. Um, that's why they really need to be good at discriminating what goes in their mouth, who hangs out in their system. For example, you having to remove that relate, you know, temporarily maybe remove the relationship with your sister from your life. It's because you couldn't digest that. It was causing you distress. You've had to discriminate, pull that out of your life. You know, mm -hmm. an executor will stay at their best if they can stay fluid, keep their what's going in their digestion simple. Because when you get out of balance, you go from being very poised, you know, in the moment and knowing the next things to do, being really inefficient, maybe um, a little bit like anxious to get things done as quickly as you can, um, really procrastinating, meaning that you are putting things away before you are actually done with them, maybe. Um, mm -hmm. you, may, you might find that, you know, when you're out of balance, it'll feel like something is stuck in your head and it's just swirling around and around. Yeah in a round, okay? So it's, it's something that you're not digesting, okay? So just like your digestion needs help, your digestion needs help. So when you're in this mode where you're circling around and around, you might be having emotional outbursts because you're really trying to get it out. So you might, you know, snap at somebody when you would ordinarily not do it, you know? One of your friends might bug you when they ordinarily wouldn't because you have some, I call it, you have someone stuck in your craw. You got something going mm -hmm. around and around, okay? This is how you can start to tell you, you are out of balance. Maybe something feels really stuck up here in your gut and in your stomach. So when you start to feel you're out of balance, you got to start hitting that digestion. The first thing I have found really works for an executor is doing some sort of endurance-based exercise, like a long bike ride or a long run. I mean, something that you get like your digestion tired and your body tired. So your mind will finally quit. It's kind of the mm -hmm. first thing I found for an executor. Um, Interesting. The, yeah, because you need to add I've, fire to your digestion. I um, I definitely like ginger too, which is fire, right? I was going to say that next. Like I love. Yep. Yeah. But, um, but also the times when I felt the healthiest in my life have been the times when I was going on a walk, like I'd walk four to five miles a day. And the times where I felt the best, where I've, you know, looked the best and really felt good is when I've been able to take long walks or kind of clear, clear my mind, I guess. Um, and it's interesting that you'd say that just because that's definitely true with um, when I felt the best mentally and physically. It makes sense. Okay. So expressing is your thing, right? Like, you are, you walked enough. So your mind cleared up, you know, if you, exp so if you can think about that for yourself, like, Hey, I need to keep things that go into my system simple because my system already really takes its time to digest things. And Hey, if I'm digesting something that's too big, I need to add fire to my digestion. I need to go walk for a long time. I need to get some ginger, some cayenne, some warming spices in my diet. I love cayenne pepper. Exactly. Perfect. You need to talk to a fiery friend like me. Who do you have that's like me and you're like <laughs> naturally fiery, who you're going to be able to speak your mind to and they're going to be like, you know what, Meg? that's bullshit that that person said that to you. And then they're going to burn away at least one negative thought you were thinking. You know what I mean? Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Like you just bring fire yeah. in to help you digest here and here. 
because your strength is to thoroughly digest and get the essential point of something. So knowing that another great tool for an executor is making sure you can take your time. So for example, it's somebody being like, Hey Meg, um, we have this thing that we need done for the show and we need it done in one hour. Can you do it? And you know that you're going to do this way better if you have a day, you know, mm -hmm. and you ask, well, you know, can I have a day to do it or how long can I have to do it? Maybe this is a bad example, but. Well, I never get a day though. It's always like it's due in an hour. <laughs> so right. it's, a, it's just super right. stressful. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, but that's actually, but that could be something that is, that may be frustrating me too, because that might kind of go against the way that I really like to be. And that could be, that could be actually, I've, I've started to move. Um, I've been doing news for most of my life and I've recently started moving into um, the programming side and like shows where I have a whole week to put everything together. Or like if I have a whole like month to, to put an entire show together and the peace of mind and how much happier I've been when I'm not, when I can literally like feel the cortisol in my body when I'm, when I'm in news and where it's like, get it done, get it done. You've got two hours, you know, that has been, I think really kind of detrimental to my health in terms of just my mental health and having a chance to do some other kind of work and realizing how much more I like that and how much more peaceful I am um, has been eye opening for me. And that's where I'm trying to, that's the direction in which I'm trying to move all the time now. So I'm still doing some of the other work because I freelance, but um, I'm trying to switch everything over to the slower pace um, where I don't have like an hour or two to get things done because I realize I've been doing that for a good portion of my life and I'm tired. <laughs> wow, that makes complete sense. And that would be keeping you in the sympathetic nervous system that, you know, your naturopath was talking about. Um, so I think, mm -hmm. I think that's great that, um, you have naturally gravitated towards that in your career because yes, that is very, um, making an executor move too quickly completely negates their gift of being able to take their time and thoroughly digest something and produce magic from it. Like executor, mm -hmm. great teachers, graphic designers, tour guides, like anybody who has to take a large amount of information and deliver an essential point is a wonderful executor. Mm -hmm. They're my opposite. I'm like, I am, I almost can't even see where I've gotten to the point in things. Like it's like my biggest mm -hmm. issue. I have executors. <laughs> um, I actually, my producer, I'm producing videos for each of these constitutional types right now. And she's an executor, which is really mm -hmm. important for me, you know, because she can tell me if I've reached the point somewhere. Like she can, right. she can see it. She can simplify it for me in a way that I can't. So it's a, mm -hmm. so when you guys um, are able to take the time, it's, it's beautiful. And this counts in interpersonal relationships too, right? So like, say you and I were friends and we got into it, you know, and you just, you didn't really know how you felt yet, but you were feeling all kinds of emotions because an executor can be a very emotional arguer. Um, and you're mm -hmm. like, but you wanted to take your time, you know, and you just say, Hey, Danny, look, um, I heard everything you said. And because our relationship is so important to me, I need to sleep on this for a night so I can really digest how I feel and get to the point mm -hmm. when, when executors get their, the time they need, they have the most lovely expression mm -hmm. of whatever it is, if that makes sense. So in general yeah. in life, it's like a couple things, right? It's like, What's going to cause me distress in my body, I need to keep out to begin with. If something is in my body causing me distress, I need to speed up my digestion to get it out as quickly as possible. And mm -hmm. to create an environment for me to thrive in, I need to see if I can take my time as much as possible. And I feel mm -hmm. like those are the, essence, those, the higher level essences. Right. Of it Interesting. But what's wonderful is this high paced job you've had has forced you to develop the mental concentration that now once you go back into a slower paced thing, you're going to be able to realize your creativity even more, I think. Like, I think it's like, 
it's totally by design that you went over and balanced the other hemisphere so much and then learned the mm -hmm. information you did. And now as you move forward in your career, you're going to be an even more balanced, strong version of yourself. The more you improve your digestion physically, the more you're going to be able to just like emotionally understand things more quickly. You're going to be able to move more quickly if your digestion can. But essentially, mm -hmm. cool. you do take your time. It's just part of who you are. I'm a speedy person, like in almost any way. Like when, like my fiance is a strong executor and I'm a speedy digester. When we do the popcorn test, mine comes out in 12 hours. His is like 24, right? Everything is like- Wait, what's the popcorn test? You know, like you eat popcorn and then you can see when it kind of comes out the other end. Oh, okay. You know, and so <laughs> the funny about that is in like every dynamic, I'm really speedy. Like it's hard for me to- speak slowly. I like to, you know, it's hard for me to drive slowly. Right. And because I'm right. so good at being quick, all I practice is slow. Like I do slow yoga. I listen to slow music. I try to slow everything down in my life because I already have the skill of picking up the pace. You are the yeah. opposite, right? It's like you already have this more naturally slower, not slower moving, but it's like, because your glands function a little bit more slowly, you're not as easily stimulated by everything like somebody like me is. Like I'm more easily mm -hmm. going to get out there, right? So if you practice speeding your digestion, tools that'll speed them, like um, mental exercises you can do, you know, whatever you can do to speed mental, emotional, and physical digestion is going to serve you mm -hmm. because you already know how to go slow. Does that make sense? Yeah, interesting. But anyway, okay. those were the main the main things I saw. Um, we could always definitely. Oh, can you tell? Mm -hmm. Oh, I just had a question. Um, so, do I have? I forget what the name of the of the of what they're called is, but you know, when you're looking at the irises, um, the like the the kidney kind of holes that you were talking about. Do I have a lot of holes, or is, are the fibers pretty close together? Um, when I look at my eyes in person, um, it, they look like they're fairly close together. Um, and it's, I don't know if it's because I've been dealing with, I've lived in this apartment for four years and I just discovered um, last fall that it has all these um, toxins. So I feel, because I've, I've looked at my eyes before, I've been interested in this kind of thing before. Is it possible that I've developed holes um, from being exposed to toxins or is that something that never changes? That's a great question. So these holes you're referring to, we call them lacunas. And yeah. there's all different shapes and sizes of lacunas. Uh, yours are smaller, so you don't have really large lacunas. Um, yours are smaller, which is why it, it would definitely be harder for you to just see them yourself. They're not big enough for that. Um, your lacunas, you were genetically born with your lacunas. Now, the difference you would okay. see for them being more toxic or less toxic would be how dark is it inside the lacuna? So there's a chance oh, okay. that, you know, hypothetically speaking, there's a chance that at the beginning of this four years, you had this, these lacuna openings, you had these fiber structure openings, but they were lighter on the inside. So it's not something you noticed until maybe, mm -hmm. and and okay, so the lacuna is showing us an area of tissue weakness, like an area where the tissue is just a little weaker. So it would be an area that the body would hold on to a toxin. It wouldn't even have the tone and vitality to get it out. So does that make sense that it, you'd be yeah. exposed to hold on to a toxin there? Okay. And then um, do you see any of the, because I've, I've, watched other um, readings that you've done and I follow your Instagram account, which is super interesting. Do you see any of the rings or is there anything of note to, to notice about how kind of the outside looks kind of like darker green and then the, and then like lighter green, that's like the lighter green or the almost yellowish that's around the brown. Does that mean anything? Yeah. And, and again, because of the quality of photos, it's hard for me to specifically tell you what this is, but, uh, yeah. If, assuming your irises truly were darker there on the outside, let's assume that that's what they look like in real life. 
This is telling mm -hmm. us that you have an area of opportunity to um, increase peripheral circulation and detox the skin. So it just means that the skin okay. is holding on to toxins, which would make sense from every other sign we see in your body. Because as we talked about, right, the skin is going to have to get hit last. So um, mm -hmm. as far as the nerve rings, I kind of think I do see a couple, but this is a photo quality thing where I can't tell you for sure. Um, you, the nerve rings is something you might be able to spot in your own eyes if you get close enough in with the mirror and like you have like a magnifying glass or one of those magnifying mirrors. Um, so I can't mm -hmm. exactly tell if you have the nerve rings. Um, the yellow. My, my left eye, the L picture, Mm -hmm. um, the right side of the, of the screen on the L picture is, is the most what my eye looks like um, when I see it in person. So I don't see like on, the, on my right picture, you know how it looks like there's such a dark ring around the outside. Yeah. I don't see that. I think that must be like shadows or something. The, most, the, the picture that looks truest to what I usually see when I look in the mirror, like with the close-up mirror, is the right side of the left eye. I don't know if that helps at all in trying to figure out. Yeah, well, just just in terms of like the color and the the way that it looks, the right side of the left eye picture is most like the color of what both eyes look like everywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, yeah, still is a little hard for me to tell, but um, yeah, based on these other things we know that we think are going on in your inner ecology, it would make sense that the skin is holding on to some toxins. It could benefit from some, um, some more circulations, so like some hot and cold showers, for example. Okay. Because if we have congestion in this middle area, the area right outside this is our absorption area. So this is basically mm -hmm. saying, hey, um, if this really is yellow, yellow is telling us the kidneys mm -hmm. are needing some love and some help. Um, okay. So, so, ba so basically, like, the, the higher level picture that we're seeing in the irises is, hey, in the middle, we're moving a little slowly, we're holding on to some toxins, so now we're having to dispense them out throughout the rest of the body, so um, some of the, the there's so now some, like, um, mucus in the, in the gut, there's, like, some, maybe some mucus stuck in the sinuses, that's kind of what that yellow is kind of coming out, you know? And it's okay. like, like now all the organs are holding on to a little toxins and they're under functioning a little. So they're not doing that enzymatic thing we're talking about as well. Um, the tissues in this area are, um, they're, they're not like toned really well and they're holding on to a little bit of toxins and maybe they're like a little inflamed that's kind of what that yellowing tells me a little bit is like okay the, the toxins coming out of the bowels are causing some inflammation in the rest of the system so it's like it's like this holistic game of starting to open up all the channels and let the body start getting back to normal so you're going to start softening the gut literally pulling out toxins from the colon just by doing that alone, you're going to invite the rest of the body to start using the colon again to get stuff out, right? And then if on the very periphery, because okay. it's another thing I wrote down for you, if you do dry skin brushing and hot and cold uh -huh. showers, then you're helping the lymphatic system and the circulation out here. Anytime you help the skin, you help the kidneys. So you're also helping the kidneys when you open up the skin. You're taking a liver cleanse drink, so you're bringing some more bile in to um, the duodenum there, you're helping to break down some more fats. This whole thing starts to work together and it just starts to like relieve the channels, improve the channels. Um, so mm -hmm. it's, it's like in natural medicine, really, the, the, the thinking has to be so different that it's no longer about seeing the body as a bunch of different parts and pieces. It's no longer mm -hmm. seeing symptoms as something that needs to be removed. It is now looking at this entire soil and saying, hey, it's not the soil, it's the soil. It's not about mm -hmm. what germs cross my path. It's about what, my, what is gonna happen when the germs get into my system. So when we start to look at that in natural medicine, it's really hard to necessarily pull out specific parts of the body because that, that kind of goes against the higher level thinking anyway of it. Um, so 
-hmm. It's, it's almost like a dom it could be like a domino effect in the system. And so in your system, you are, we're already genetically born with, um, a digestion that could use some support. And mm -hmm. so the domino effect would happen there from that. So yes, the liver is important. Yes, the kidneys are important. Yes, um, circulation is important. It's just we see the main like process in your system is that things are going to break down through your digestion. So that's why we would go there first with you. But everything okay. matters. That's so interesting. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I know that you've been on the phone with me for a long time and I really appreciate it. Is there anything else I should know? Um, you know, we'll just rewatch this video, you know, I'll give this to you after I've uploaded it. And then when you rewatch this video and you read my ebook, I think it'll be easier or not. I don't know if it's been difficult, but I, I know it, you'll be able to piece things together. If you need to follow up and we need to kind of come up with more of a tactical plan, let me know. I, um, I've learned that some executors can thrive from that, but I just appreciate you really having questions and taking control of this and just wanting information. I'm, I'm just here to support you and be useful. So if you have ideas, let me know as well. But yeah, I think just rewatching this video will be helpful. Yeah, no, I just have one, one more question. When you were saying about the liver drink or something, is that something that's in your book as well? Yep, that's also in my book. So okay. um, let's talk about that real quick, though. In my book, I think that, um, just take a note of this. Do half of the amount that's in the recipe okay. for, for the first week. So I recommend you try that drink for two weeks straight. It's something that you just take first thing in the morning. The first week, mm -hmm. cut that recipe in half. The second week... You can add, you can make it a little stronger if you feel like it. You're just gonna have to kind of play it by ear. Um, it definitely, you'll notice it in your digestion that it's kind of getting some things moving okay. and um, cleaning out there. You know, you know, sometimes when you go to the bathroom and like you have to wipe like a million times. I don't know if you've ever had one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, know, you, you probably have a lot of those with the liver cleanse. Uh, it's cleaning out so much stuck bile and mucus that that kind of stuff happens on a liver cleanse and then all of a sudden like your digestion's better your skin's better and your liver is kind of cleansed out a little bit and it's in much better shape and then in the future when you um experience the the infinite wiping that would be because you just ate something that your body disagreed with so it covered it in mucus and that's the mucus that's that infinite wiping yeah interesting huh yeah, that's cool. I mean, yeah, super interesting. So yeah, that liver, so, yeah. so pretty much if we just summarize, um, if you continue to eat simply and just more alkaline foods, that's what needs to go in the mouth, right? And then castor oil packs are going to soften the stomach. Ginger poultices are going to relieve and de-inflame the kidneys. A little hydrotherapy is going to pull out those toxins. And then doing the stuff on the skin and on the outside keeps the circulation going. You do that for like a few months, mm -hmm. you're definitely gonna shift a lot in your inner world, your outer world. Um, that liver cleanse drink, you'll do that only for about two weeks. We don't really wanna keep going on that for too long, so only about two weeks on that. After that, you probably are gonna be in um, a pretty good position to take things a little bit more deeply, like what your naturopath suggested for you. You're probably going to be ready for it. Oh, that. this is so great. Yeah. I'm so glad that we talked. I'm so glad that I'm so thankful that you did this because I've been, I mean, again, maybe with the perfectionism, I've been, I got the plan, the like detox plan from um, my naturopathic doctor, but I've been reluctant to start because I, even though she gave me the list, I've been worried that once I do it, I'll make myself worse. Because I've, I've done detoxes before where I did make myself worse. And I've been reluctant to start because I've been afraid I'm going to make my life so miserable. I don't, and especially now I'm in New York and with COVID floating around, even though I'm mostly home all the time anyway, I've been like, is it a good idea to stress my immune system at this time? What if I, you know, and so I haven't done it. And even though there's nothing I've been wanting to do more, especially since I've been in this apartment and found out about all the toxins and to get rid of them. But I'm really thankful because this seems like a perfect step in the middle between what I need to do and how I can start to try to make myself better 
And then when I'm ready to start something that's a little more like heavy duty so that I'm not, I'm not, I won't be so scared to, to start it thinking that it's not going to work somehow. Yeah. So this is great. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think you're into it. I really appreciate your time. This is so cool. Yeah. My, my detox book is really going to empower you moving forward because as soon as you get into that, you'll see I basically created a chart that's like, hey, you'll experience these symptoms, which means you need to do these things. Um, so that mm -hmm. just as you, as you start to absorb and conceptualize the information in my detox ebook, you will feel empowered every time you go to change your diet or do a cleanse because you will know no matter what how to take care of any reactions that you have. So I think your intuition mm -hmm. was spot on that you just needed something in between. I do, I do strongly feel that the information you'll learn in my ebook um, and the things we just talked about is, is definitely all you need um, to, to get that next thing happening. And just know too, I'm happy to, um, if you wanna share the plan your naturopath gave, like as soon as you get to that point in time when you wanna go deeper, I'm happy to look mm -hmm. over that with you and then talk about your symptoms again that you're experiencing now so we can anticipate if you're going to have any symptoms and then we can plan for which treatments you need to be ready for, if that makes sense. Oh, okay. Interesting. So, yeah, you know, that detox does. Detoxing and cleansing is my specialty. It's what I've done the most of. Um, so don't hesitate to reach out with questions because, you know, the more you learn how to detox and cleanse, that is how you stay independently healthy the rest of your life because- Right. Um, let, like all disease and cure are the same. Like whatever's obstructing mm -hmm. your body is causing a disease and removing it is going to be the cure. So it's like always the same thing. So literally that right. is the key to health. So it's really exciting that you're interested in it and that you're in the perfect timing for it. So let me know how I can support you on that. Um, but following this video, I'm going to, after I download this and get a copy of it, I'll send it to mm -hmm. you. And I'll share these okay. photos with you. I, I lightened them slightly and edited them slightly just so I could see the markings a little bit better. So I'll share these edited photos with you as well. But um, yeah, and then let's just keep in touch and um, let me know how I can continue to be useful to you. But I really appreciate you coming on here too. Thank you so much. This has been really fascinating. I appreciate all your knowledge and, and your time, definitely. Mm -hmm.